Wait a minute. Do you hear that? That, that sound. Boom. Boom. No! <gasps> that didn't come from the chocolate lights. Oh. No, that, that came from something else. Deep shit. Will, your action! I don't know! Fireball hit! I'd have to roll a 13 or higher! Too risky, cast a protection spell. Don't be a pussy! Fireball hit! Stranger Things is a pretty unique horror show. It mixes childhood antics, small town mysteries, government conspiracies, and even interdimensional travel with a horrific monster. You've got the Goonies, Silent Hill, and SCP Foundation all mixed together. And it's an awful recipe for disaster. There are too many characters to keep track of, too many rules to follow, and the plot jumps all over the place. It's like the show is trying to juggle chainsaws. And it works! I have some very minor gripes with it, but it is a masterful show through and through. The less said about it, the better. If any of the previous descriptions interest you, then I highly recommend at least the first few episodes to see what you think about it for yourself. But if you need some more convincing, then I'll get on with the review. The small town of Hawkins, Indiana never had a whole lot going for it, until young boy Will Byers goes missing. While his friends search for him, they run into a quiet girl with psychic abilities known only as Eleven, and she's on the run from a government agency. Meanwhile, Will's mother, brother, and the local police conduct their own investigation leading them to a conspiracy with the potential to endanger the townsfolk and possibly beyond. It's a show of plot twists and surprises. But while the typical M. Night Shyamalan flick will usually feel cheap and unsatisfying, Stranger Things manages it with finesse. This is mainly due to how much time is spent on building the individual characters. The bond between the four kids is realistic. They're all Dungeons & Dragons nerds with no one else to rely on so it makes sense why they would go so far for each other. Joyce, Will's mother, is insanely desperate to find her son, while police chief Jim Hopper is totally detached and unsatisfied with his life in general. Find my son, Hop. Find him. Nancy is your generic so-and-so with some high school drama, and Jonathan is an introverted creep. All of these characters eventually come together to meet the same goal, as goes the unlikely hero cliché, and it's always awesome when it's pulled off well. As the show goes on, everyone grows and develops over time. Their personalities are first established, and then they are met with situations that challenge their character, which helps the audience to grow attached to them. Vance. Barb. I'm fine. This isn't you. I'm fine. Just go ahead and go home, okay? Look at Jim Hopper here. He's slouched over in his chair. His expression is so annoyed. He doesn't care. He doesn't have the patience for this. But little by little, he begins to realize that there's much more to this case than just a runaway kid, and he starts taking it a lot more seriously. The backstories and flashbacks are short and well presented, providing just enough information and quickly moving on, allowing the audience to become emotionally invested, but never bored. I got off early and... Ta-da! Poltergeist! I, I thought I wasn't allowed to see it. I changed my mind. As long as you don't have nightmares for a week. No, I won't. I don't get scared like that anymore. Oh yeah? Not even of clowns? No. What about my witch? No, mom. Oh, I'm not five anymore. I'm talking to you so stupid. Up in my <laughs> <laughs> you. Will! Will! I love the story. On top of being well written and very well acted, it's also unique and interesting, but a couple of things do rub me the wrong way. The relationship between Nancy and Jonathan, specifically the sequence of events that lead them to teaming up, it feels a little too convenient for me. Even more so than how Eleven joins up with the kids. I understand that Jim is the adult lead male of the show, but it is pretty silly how he shifts into action hero mode during the later half of the season. 
Hey, you can't be back here. Yeah, I just got off the line with O'Bannon. He said that he needs to see you at the station in some emergency. What the hell are you talking about? I don't work with O'Bannon. I say O'Bannon? I meant... Okay. I'm also not totally satisfied with Finn Wolfhard's performance as Mike Wheeler. He's not bad by any means, but in direct comparison to the rest of the cast, he's definitely subpar. Something about the way he talks doesn't quite come off right, and it sucks because he's the main character, so you'd better get used to seeing him the most. Uh, these are all my science fair trophies. We got first every year. Except for last year when we got third. Mr. Clark said it was totally political. I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just being unfair. Either way, he still does a good job, but the rest of the cast is phenomenal. Dustin strikes that perfect balance between mediator and comic relief. You push first, and you know the rule, you draw first blood. No, no way, I'm not shaking his hand. You're shaking his hand. No, I'm not. This isn't a discussion, this is the rule of law. Obey, or be banished from the party. Do you want to be banished? No. Good. And Nancy is a flawed character who allows her passion to overtake her judgment. This is so stupid. I'm just gonna Calm drop down. you off. Barb, come on. You promised that you'd go. You're coming. We're gonna have a great time. He just wants to get in your pants. No, he doesn't. Nance. Seriously. All of the actors and actresses play their roles extremely well. But Winona Ryder and Charlie Heaton absolutely steal the show, both individually and together. I can't eat. I just need you to eat, Mom. Listen, listen. The Xerox place opens in like 30 minutes. Yeah. And I don't want no, you to no, go. I, I told you, I got it. Karen, take because I, I should it. be here. Okay, okay. And we need to make, what, 200, 300 yeah. copies? How much okay. is a copy? Okay, Mom. 10 cents? Mom. Mom. If we, if Mom. 10 cents, Mom. Three. He, he can't get like this, okay? I'm sorry. No. no, it's okay. The special effects also deserve attention. A small bit of a spoiler, but like I said before, there is some interdimensional travel with similarities to Silent Hill. Stranger Things' version of the other world is excellent. It's dark, dreary, rotten, and a wonder to stare at. It's a literal nightmare world, and then it eventually gets explained naturally so that the viewer easily follows along without losing the plot. The show's singular monster is also presented beautifully, in the dark. Once it finally becomes fully revealed in decent lighting, it leaves a bit to be desired. It's very well designed and drawn, but the animation isn't quite up to snuff. The way that it moves makes it kind of look like a puppet, or a character out of the first Toy Story. It's not bad at all, it's totally passable as is, but I am expecting improved, far more realistic, and smoother animation for Season 2. I can only assume that the production team is getting a bigger budget. Stranger Things is a masterpiece of horror, sci-fi, and mystery, and especially so considering how much it serves up on its plate. The variety of important characters is pretty staggering, and they all get fair screen time, are fully developed by the middle of the season, and are well challenged by the end. The show finishes on a cliffhanger that purposely sets itself up for a sequel, but even so, the first season actually works really well on its own. If the show were to end right then and there, I'd be satisfied with it. Each episode isn't very self-contained, they directly run back to back on each other, and just serve the broader narrative. However, the pacing of each episode is extremely satisfactory, and it always ends on an exciting note that draws you in to the next episode. If you'd rather watch an episode once a week, or see through the whole thing at once, it works well either way. If you haven't seen Stranger Things yet, and you already have a Netflix subscription, then it comes highly recommended from me. I cannot emphasize that enough. It may very well be the best piece of film on the service. Season 2 just started today, and I can't wait to jump back in. I, I don't know what that means. I, I need you to tell me what to do. What should I do? How do I get to you? 
How, how do I find you? What should I do? Thank you for watching my review on Stranger Things. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe.